EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Martich here with your outlook for January 23rd, 2023. It is Monday, back to work, and the Monday video forecast is proudly sponsored by Kinsley's Family Market in Broadheadsville, Monroe County, Pennsylvania. Kinsley's ShopRite is celebrating with all NFL football fans every weekend throughout the playoffs, and Kinsley's has their wing bar featuring jumbo wings cold or hot for just $5.99 a pound. You can couple these great wings with their other catering specialties such as a cheese or shrimp tray, throw in a three- or six-foot hoagie, and you have a party, and don't forget the freshest cannolis from their bakery department. Get ready for the playoffs by celebrating this Sunday for the championship games up through the really big game in February at Kinsley ShopRite, the world's largest shop right, located at 107 Kinsley's Drive in Broadheadsville, Monroe County, Pennsylvania. Proud sponsors of the Monday video forecast. So yes, championship games are this coming weekend. So I'm going to give you an updated look here for the game in Philadelphia. San Francisco is going to be the opponent. Uh, that is Sunday at 3 o'clock. So we'll take a look at that here in today's video. But first and foremost, we have uh, the remainder of this system that started affecting us yesterday afternoon. So this is now moving through, and as it's doing so, it's drawing in some colder air. So you will have some uh, rain showers that are going to end as snow showers in a lot of areas, especially across uh, eastern Pennsylvania and northern New Jersey as this low continues to pull away. And it does those this morning, so this will be out of here rather quickly. But then when we get in the afternoon, uh, still left over snow shower here in northern New Jersey, but I think most of us are done before noon uh, in the interior, in the interior meaning the Pennsylvania, west of the Delaware River, you should have uh, that completed and wrapped up by about noon. And then we're just remaining mostly cloudy and breezy, turning breezy this afternoon and overnight in the wake of that system. It's probably going to be breezy all the way through Tuesday, I think. Uh, we're looking at uh, wind gusts that are generally 10 to 15 and peak gusts 25 to 30 during that stretch. And that could happen uh, late, you know, later this afternoon and evening especially. And then again here on Tuesday, and this is all cold air advection related stuff. So let's go over to the NAM High Res Future Simulator Radar. I'm going to back this up a little bit and go bring it to midnight because I want to give you an give me an idea of what this was doing. This is midnight last night, and all this rain pushing way up here in, into Northeast PA. So a lot of these areas, um, you know, up in these these areas here, uh, some of you are like, "Well, weren't we supposed to get snow?" Well, you will. It is going to be after this changes back over overnight. And some of that transition will already have taken place by the time you're watching the video. But you can see this transition after this point. This all turns over to snow. Still some rain showers here at 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, from like Lehigh Valley, northern New Jersey. But that will be transitioning to snow there, too. As you can see, the entire eastern part of Pennsylvania is now in snow by the time you get to 9 o'clock in the morning. And that translates into northern New Jersey before it runs out. Can we get some measurable snow out of this? Yes, I think you can get a you know coating to an inch on the back end here as this pulls away. And some of these areas across Northeast PA will, will be changing over quicker, so you're going to get those higher amounts that were indicated on the snow map that we had out. And uh, this will pull away after that point in the afternoon. Again, this is going to continue into early to mid-afternoon here in the northeastern uh, parts of New Jersey here before this pulls away. And then that's it. Okay, that's all we're dealing with with that system. We go to... Generally, uh, partly cloudy skies here on Tuesday with temperatures uh, slightly higher, but uh, still in that general 36 to 46 degree range. Not really too warm. Uh, but the next system we're gonna is is going to take focus this week, and that's going to require a snow map as early as later today. We're going to have to have a snow map for this system because this is a system that is going to prevent uh, is going to promote a front end thump of snow. Okay, so you're going to have a pretty good pretty good rate, some frontal genesis involved with this. And the setup is such that as we move past Tuesday, get to Wednesday here. The setup is such as you have this uh, area low pressure moving up toward us, but at the same time, you have this is the difference between this past system that we're or the current system we're dealing with and the one that's coming in the middle of the week is you have high pressure above the system that's going to funnel in some cold air into the system initially. So you're going to have uh, cold air, a cold air source initially before this high eventually heads off to the east and everything changes over to rain. This is not going to be an all-snow event, but you will have enough cold air at the onset when this precipitation comes in to, to give you that, that thump of snow. And because you have a gradient difference between high pressure to the north and this low pressure cutting to the west here, you're going to get a frontal genesis band that's going to keep lay down some, uh, some heavier snow rates uh, for a while here on Wednesday. This looks like it's coming in Wednesday morning. And then uh, either side at noon, you can get some pretty good rates as this frontal genesis bands moves through. And then when you get late in the afternoon and evening, it's going to change over to sleet, then freezing rain briefly, and then over to rain everywhere before this finally ends. Not, the rain part of it is not going to last that long, though. Uh, but this will involve, I think, more areas than have that is going to receive snow from this current system. 
uh, and a little bit further south and east. And uh, the amounts will be a lot higher and uh, highly uh, distributed across the region here. So I'll show you here uh, some other... Uh, here's the GFS doing the same thing, okay? Uh, it has this thump of snow on the front end, some frontal genesis involved with this with a high pressure off to the north, strong low pressure out here, the gradient between the two. It's almost like a warm front here in a sense that you have this area low pressure, right? And this is kind of like the warm front, and this is uh, basically what it is. It's overrunning precipitation, and you have the cold air source funneling in the cold air on this side. But south of there, it's just rain, and then it has a, a cold front that's eventually going to push through with this too. So when, once that system moves off to the north, it's going to drag that cold front through eventually. But that's after the precipitation already ends, okay? See that? So it's already through. Could be a leftover uh, snow shower or flurry here on Thursday, but return breezy again behind this system. And then it looks like it's partly cloudy skies both uh, Friday through the weekend. Here's what the European model has. Uh, for this uh, this system. Now, this is going to change around a little bit. We're going to have our, our our map out that's going to uh, show these areas. But again, there's a sharp cutoff on the southeastern areas. It's just not as far northwest as this last one was because you have uh, that cold air source aiding in that a little bit. So it's going to be interesting to see where this fringe line is going to be. Is it going to be down here somewhere? Does that allow Philadelphia to get at least some measurable accumulations of snow out of this? It is possible, especially if you look at the GFS. It's even more aggressive than this. Uh, New York City, it's possible, okay? But I think this is more more or less going to be an I-78 points north uh, system here where you get several inches of snow. And not just talking about, you know, one to three or even two to four. You can get three to six out of that or even higher than that in some spots. It is possible. Uh, but I just don't want to commit to that just yet until we have another couple model cycles to go through before we get to the 5 o'clock call. So we'll see how this works out. I, I, again, the, the GFS that ran this evening... Uh, if I pull that up real quick, just so you can see that, it's a lot further southeast with that. I don't think that's right, but uh, we'll see, okay? Might be a little bit too aggressive, too far south. Not impossible, though, okay? It's going to depend on timing and uh, position of that high, how strong it is, that kind of thing. But it does have this uh, widespread area of, uh, of three to six inches across the region, which is a big storm for this year, right? We haven't had anything uh, noteworthy at all. Uh, so we'll see how this works out. we got a couple, uh, couple model cycles to look at. Uh, just don't get too excited if you're down here in Southeast PA and seeing these model runs come in with these really robust amounts here. I'm not really sold on that just yet. I think if you're close to I-78, it's a more legitimate probability, especially when you get up to between I-78 and I-80 uh, in Pennsylvania. And the same holds true for uh, for New Jersey. 78 North looks like it's a little bit better. Okay, so that's that system. Once we get beyond this system, as I pull this uh, forward here, uh, again, we had the leftover snow shower flurries here on uh, Thursday. Uh, we mostly cloudy and breezy otherwise in the wake of that system. So another breezy day behind that as cold air vection works in. And then Friday, we are partly cloudy. Friday night, mostly cloudy. We'll have to watch for maybe a snow shower overnight in a few spots. But then Saturday is a partly cloudy day. And then Sunday, uh, here is, uh, this is looking at 1 p.m. Sunday. Here is, uh, and there is 7 p.m. Sunday right there. You can see some precipitation moving at us. But the championship game here in South Philadelphia is at 3 o'clock, so I don't expect this to, as of right now, uh, this to come in that quickly. Okay, You might have an increase in clouds during the game. Temperatures are going to be in the 40s, uh, well into the 40s, in fact, so it won't be too terribly cold either for tailgating or for the game. But this looks like the precipitation is going to come, come in uh, sometime during the evening and after the game is over. We'll continue to follow that throughout the week, so... Uh, we're making sure we're not having any weather issues for the game. Won't be any snow, so we won't have a repeat of what we saw in Buffalo uh, yesterday. Okay, so it won't be anything like that. This will be uh, most likely in the form of rain in Philadelphia if this does come in in time. But right now, the uh, most guidance is keeping this at bay and keeping it away from South Philadelphia uh, during the game scheduled game time at three o'clock on Sunday. So we'll continue to follow that throughout the week. But we're going to be focused here uh, first and foremost is going to be with this system here in the midweek and. Where exactly uh, you know the snow line sets up and all that stuff and how much snow we're getting out of this. Again, you get a, a, maybe like a four to six hour window where you're getting, you know, rates of about an inch an hour uh, or better in some of those uh, some of those hours within that time frame, and uh, with that frontal genesis that's associated with it. If that happens, you can get a pretty good thump of snow on the front end. And again, three to six inches isn't a ton of snow, but it's a lot more than a lot of places have gotten this season. So it'll be certainly be welcomed if you're a snow lover. I'm EPA, WA meteorologist Bobby Bartrus. That is your outlook for January 23rd, 2023. Have a great Monday.